you. Yes, you. Before I begin with the boundaries and the contents of the infratemporal fossa, I want you to identify the infratemporal fossa for me. So this is the lateral view of the skull. And can you identify the infratemporal fossa on this skull? Well, if you could, that's great. If you couldn't, that's not a problem because that's what I'm here for. This irregular space that you see right here below the zygomatic arc, this space is the infratemporal fossa. And also, if you still haven't watched the previous parts, I recommend you to watch those parts before you begin with this one. So let's begin. So this is the infratemporal fossa. Moving on to the borders of the infratemporal fossa. The anterior border. The anterior border is formed by the posterior surface of the body of the maxilla. This is the maxilla. And the anterior border is formed by the posterior surface of the body of the maxilla. Right. And posteriorly, the posterior border is formed by the styloid process of the temporal bone. This right here is the styloid process. To make it more clear and visible, we will dismantle the mandible. And now you can see the styloid process more clearly. Also, the another feature that we can see after removing the mandible is the lateral pterygoid plate. This plate, it forms the medial border of the infratemporal fossa. Superiorly, the fossa is formed by the infratemporal surface of the greater wing of sphenoid. So this is the greater wing of sphenoid and the infratemporal surface is right here. This is the infratemporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid. So this forms the upper border and laterally the border is formed by the ramus of the mandible. This is the ramus of the mandible as well as the coronoid process. I'll describe the boundaries once again. So the anterior border is formed by the posterior surface of the body of the maxilla. This is the maxilla and this is the posterior surface of the body of the maxilla. Posteriorly, the posterior border is formed by the styloid process. This is the styloid process. The lateral border is formed by the ramus of the mandible. This is the ramus of the mandible as well as the coronoid process. Medially, I'll dismantle the mandible to show you the medial border. So the medial border is formed by the lateral pterygoid plate. This is the lateral pterygoid plate. Superiorly, the border is formed by the infratemporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid. That is right here. This is the infratemporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. This is the sphenoid right here. This one. And the infratemporal surface is right here. So this forms the superior border and these are the borders of the infratemporal fossa. And now we're moving on to the contents of the infratemporal fossa. There are two muscles that are present in the infratemporal fossa and those are the lateral pterygoid muscle and the medial pterygoid muscle. The lateral pterygoid and the medial pterygoid. The mandibular nerve along with its branches also lies inside the infratemporal fossa also the maxillary nerve along with the posterior superior alveolar nerve we also have the corda tympani as well as the first and second parts of the maxillary artery with these branches of course then we also have the posterior superior alveolar artery 
that is the branch of the third part of the maxillary artery and last but not the least the accompanying veins also lie inside the infratemporal fossa so this was all about the infratemporal fossa and if you liked the video do give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay tuned with the upcoming videos